and welcome to my buyer's guide on integrated amplifiers. And before we go any further, a quick apology about the glasses. I had to put some tape in the middle of it. If you saw my last speaker's buyer's guide, and I'll put a little link up yonder in case you missed that, there was a tale to tell. I've placed a pinned comment underneath that particular video and you'll see the whole sorry tale there. But it resulted in my glasses breaking. And the optician, I'm getting a new pair, don't worry, but the optician said, look, all we can do is put a bit of tape in the middle. But it does remind me of those old World War II photographs where you see these kids, you know, the little spotty herbits with the bowl cut with the glasses kept together in tape and the coat held together with a piece of string. That sort of looks. Now, I'm sure after telling you that sorry tale about my glasses, you're feeling all kinds of sympathy and pity. So now is obviously the best time to ask if you wouldn't mind clicking on the like button and also hitting subscribe. So that will obviously urge my optician to hurry up, supply me with a new pair of glasses so I can once more, as you know, return to my suave, sophisticated James Bond demeanor. Until that time though, let's get on with the plot and amplifiers. Amplifiers form the hub of your hi-fi. Your music effectively circles around the things, entering in one socket, tumbling around inside the chassis like a musical washing machine, and popping out of another socket. If you look down on your hi-fi, your amp would form the center of a mechanical web with a horde of cables attached to the back, but more invisible tendrils like remote control signals and, well, increasingly these days, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi commands flowing from the front and all around. Amplifiers are Control centers, they are a sort of sonic equivalent of the bridge of the Starship Enterprise. There are, in fact, in most cases, more sockets and plugs and buttons and switches and lights and more attached to this one or two or three boxes than anything else that your hi-fi sees or will ever see. And this is also the power center of your entire hi-fi. If you've ever had VU meters installed in your hi-fi amplifier, those VU meters actually measured something significant. Attach a pair of VU meters to a CD player, and if you go into red with a disc spinner, VUs will warn you that the lead singer is about to sound a bit squeaky. But if you go into the red with a pair of VU meters on a hi-fi amplifier, those VUs will warn you that if you don't back off right now, the following explosion will bodily throw you against the rear wall like some unfeasible stunt in a superhero movie. And then your listening room will be ripped from time itself to leave a black hole filled with a sticky mess where your house used to be. Amplifiers, serious boxes made of aluminium, steel, and no doubt bits of leftover meteorite. Amplifiers stuffed with more silicon than half a dozen Sahara deserts, and more glass valves than Frankenstein's lab. Amplifiers, oh yeah. Now amplifiers, especially integrated amplifiers, because they're in one single chassis, they're odd things because they're stuck, as I say, right in the middle of your hi-fi chain. And as I say, they're also the boxes which hold all the bells and the whistles and the buttons and the knobs and the flashy bits. So they're often the most visual and interactive of components. Now amplifiers are also a critical part of the entire sound quality structure of your hi-fi. Your amp can receive a quite superb source-based sonic signal, but if it decides to mess it up at that point, then your speakers will spew out garbage, no matter how good those speakers may be. So how do you prevent that happening? Well, there's a few points that you need to bear in mind. These decisions will affect the health of your ears as well as your wallet. Question one. We're talking about integrated amplifiers here, but really, should you go integrated at all or should you go separate? An integrated amplifier is a design where all of the amplifier bits and pieces and everything you need to run your hi-fi is stuffed into a single boxed chassis. Separates, on the other hand, take each function that the amplifier performs 
and puts the innards of those functions into separate boxes, separate chassis. That means putting all of the controlling bits, including buttons and the like, into the so-called pre-amplifier box. The power transformer and all of those power bits are put into the power amplifier section, or in some extreme cases, each left and right channel of the power amplifier can also be separated itself into monoblocks. Integrated amplifiers also on many occasions include a built-in phono amplifier, and this in itself can be separated out into its own chassis. More esoteric amplifiers break down the amplifier into even more boxes. One reason to select an integrated amplifier is footprint. After all, you're looking at a single amplifier box here. If you go separates, then you're looking at a pre-amplifier, so that's one box, and a power amplifier, which is another box. If that power amplifier is split into separate monoblocks, then that's three separate boxes you're looking at. Just how much space will that occupy? You may not have the shelf space or the room to cater for such a large footprint. And how much is all that going to cost? Well, an integrated amplifier is a one hit. It's one price. But if you're looking at a pre-amplifier and then maybe a pair of monoblocks, the price will rise exponentially. If you're on a budget and you want a built-in phono amp in your integrated amplifier, well, there is another box if you have an external model and an extra bill if you do decide to go for an external phono amp. This is why an integrated amplifier is an ideal solution if you're on a budget and or you need an amplifier with a small-ish footprint. Now separates are very useful indeed in sound terms because when you separate each of these functions, the preamp and the power amplifier, then you're lowering the possibility of cross-contamination in electrical terms. You're lowering the possibility of high frequency noise, masking detail. So all that is a good thing in terms of sound quality for separates. But as I say, there is that footprint and price element. Next question, should you go solid state or should you go valves, or for my American friends, tubes? The basic foundation for all amplifiers is either solid state, which means transistors and associated chips of different flavors, or valves and tubes, those very attractive and nicely glowing glass tubes with filaments inside that form talking points of parties and do their very best as central heating for your listening room because they're too hot to touch. Apart from the aesthetics, valves are very pretty and they're often on show, while solid state innards are as ugly as sin and thus hidden inside steel boxes. But both exhibit unique sonic characters. Broadly, and again, there are exceptions, of course, valves offer a warming sound while solid state is a little bit on the cooler and maybe slightly more mechanical side. Valves promote organic detail, delicate upper mid-range and treble, but not so much bass, while solid state sounds possibly harder edged in the mids and treble, but provide bass slam and punch. And again, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, there's lots of exceptions out there, but I'm talking in a very broad based canvas here. Now I admit that explanation is rather extreme because there are many shades of gray in terms of sonic personality, way more than 50 actually. Solid state also generates more power and does so simply. For valves, power can be tough to produce, and when it does, it ramps up the cost. And another question, should you go for an amplifier that's rather simple in its design formula, or do you need to head for an amplifier which is rather busier? In general terms, and again, there's plenty of exceptions, the cheaper the amplifier, the busier, it tends to be in terms of additional bits and pieces. Hence, low-cost amplifiers tend to provide value in terms of extra facilities, such as built-in DACs, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth with those screw-in aerials at the back, lots of digital connections, possibly PC-type interface sockets for pushing pods to add more facilities, 
AV this and home automation that, 70s style tone controls and more. There's a trade-off though. The more stuff you cram into an amplifier, the worse it may sound because of that noisy cross-contamination and distortive effects I mentioned earlier. This is why most expensive amplifiers do one thing and one thing only. They, and this is a surprise, get this, they amplify. A lot of expensive amplifiers have next to no controls either. Again, in broad terms, less is more in terms of sound quality. The next question, footprint and weight. You normally buy an amplifier for reasons of sound quality, but sometimes life gets in the way. For example, my main reference amplifier consists of a large preamplifier which takes a lot of shelf space. In addition to that, I use two large valve monoblock power amplifiers that are so large and so high they need special floor standing shelves on their own and quite possibly their own planning permission. Also, if I was to physically pick up one of my valve monoblocks on my own, then I'd be taking a quick trip down to A&E asking them to repair my hernia, such as their individual weight. Keep the issues of size and weight in mind when you look for a new amplifier. Now there's several general points which are just as important. Firstly, when looking to buy an amplifier, make sure there are enough inputs and outputs to plug everything you need into it. Make sure that all the bits and pieces you have in your hi-fi have room to plug in, but also think about the year hence. What will you be buying and upgrading and changing in the coming 12 months? Make sure your amplifier can accommodate. Some amplifiers offer more than others in this regard, and it would be a bit silly to purchase an amplifier low on the input socket count and then find, once everything has been plugged in, there's no room for your CD player, for example. Next, is a remote control essential? Not all amplifiers have one, and not all users need them, but some users do find them essential, so have a think about that as well. Finally, some integrated amplifiers might not feature the expected facilities that you require. That is, just because you're presented with an integrated amplifier, don't assume it'll include a phono amplifier or a headphone amplifier or whatever it is. Take a close look first. Make sure you do a bit of research before you buy. So what integrated amplifiers do I actually recommend? Well, as I said in my speaker's buyer's guide, you're gonna to have to give me a little bit of slack on this particular one because all I'm gonna be recommending are nine amplifiers. Those nine amplifiers will be split into three groups of three covering different price points. And because I wanna offer as much choice as possible, with one exception, and we'll get to that one exception later on, I'm gonna be spreading those price points as far apart as possible. So there's no point in me recommending half a dozen amplifiers and they all sit at 500 pounds. That gives you next to no choice at all. I wanna provide as much choice as possible in terms of price. Now, because of that, I'm gonna miss hundreds of amplifiers and I'm sure your favorites will not be in this list. There are many favorites of mine which are not in this list, but I wanna provide a wide choice. So. I want you to help. I want you down in the comments to provide your top three integrated and keep them integrated, please, if you can, your top three integrated amplifiers down below. I would like, if possible, to turn this video into a proper resource and to turn this video from being a mere video into a proper resource, that's where you come in. It'll mean that this video relates more to real world use it'll make it more essential. The video itself is almost like a pointer. It's a place holder. The real work goes on underneath in the comments section because that's where the discussions are. That's where the advice can be offered. And by all means, if you see anyone asking questions below, and I know there are some very knowledgeable people 
that look at this channel and watch the videos on this channel, dive in, offer your expert advice. Because as I say, I know you guys out there, you know your stuff. I appreciate that. I can get the ball rolling and I will obviously pitch in whenever I can. But if you see anybody out there who's asking for help, please offer a slice of your knowledge. It will be very gratefully received by the people asking the questions I know and also by myself. And I appreciate any help you can give on that matter. On another point, I'm based in the UK. I'm not in the US, I'm not in Germany, I'm not in Australia or wherever. So I can only respond to items I've reviewed or I've seen or I've used in another context in another place and I get a feel for the amplifier. If I don't see those things, I can't really react to them. So I don't see everything. And there are items, say, in the US I've never seen in my life. There are items, amplifiers, superb designs I never get to test because no one brings them into the UK. I depend on UK distribution. And if that distribution doesn't handle your favorite amplifier, I can't recommend this, can I? But again, this is where you come in. So if you have an amplifier that's not in the list, you love it, stick it down in the comments, your top three, please, and I will be most grateful. Now, one thing I must add in terms of the amplifiers I'll be recommending to you today, I've decided to bias the majority of my recommended amplifiers below a thousand pounds. I will be talking about a trio of amplifiers above a thousand, but the majority of the amplifiers for this particular guide will be below £1,000. Now I can do another buyer's guide which just looks at integrated above £1,000. Let me know if you want that. But just for this particular buyer's guide, that's the bias, below 1000 So on to the list. And we'll start at a lower price point. Everything from, I don't know, £50 up to around 600 Now my first choice is from Cambridge, the AXA25. This is priced at around 225 But then I thought, no, well, yes, I do recommend this, but I think I will withdraw it for this little trio of products because I'm going to recommend the Cambridge Topaz AM10 instead. Now, this particular amplifier is no longer available for sale. It's just been deleted from the Cambridge range. And because it's not long been deleted, there are plenty of new or as new examples floating around at a bargain price. Cambridge themselves at one point were selling this particular amplifier for, I think it was, 50 pounds, five zero, 50 pounds. So I would encourage you to look around for examples of this particular amplifier. It's a absolute bargain. More powerful than its sister AM5 model, the AM10 also includes a built-in phono amplifier that handles moving magnet cartridges. Cambridge is in a happy position of being able to produce low-cost amplifiers that actually sound good. We're going to zoom up the price point to 399 next, and we're going to look at the IOTA VX. SA3. Based on a relatively small footprint, the size of the SA3 will attract those looking for a low-key physical hi-fi presence. The generally impressive sound output will also appeal to everyone else. The useful feature count provides added value for money. And we go up the price range now to 599 and an integrated from Audiolab the 6000A. The 6000A provides the perfect balance of performance to a build budget. It's the perfect compromise. Every part of the sound envelope has been looked at and enhanced to the point when the money ran out. Then Audiolab stopped at that point. In short, this is an instant classic integrated. Next up, well, we're going up the rung in terms of price. We're looking at around 600 to 1,000 in this particular section. And first up, we're gonna look at an amplifier from Cyrus, the Cyrus One at 699. Based on a major redesign of the brand's products, the One, in capital letters, offers a small footprint and a sound that provides focus, mid-range, precision, and bass control. It includes a built-in phono amplifier, and you also get Bluetooth as well. We are looking at 
£730 or so for our next amplifier, which includes valves for the first time. This one is called the A10 and is from a company called Pure Sound. Designed as a Class A ultra linear push pull design, the A10 uses a pair of 6 N3 valves in the preamp section and four 6P14 valves for the output stage. The company says that these valves are quote, a modern equivalent to the EL84 family. It's the calming nature of the A10 that really impresses me. Despite the supposed low power, the A10 never felt it was stressing or tense. Next up is another valve integrated amplifier. This one is from a company called Icon Audio. It's called the Stereo 20, and it's priced around 949, 999, something in that area. Just because an amplifier sports a valve doesn't mean it's any good. In fact, most cheap valve amplifiers are pretty poorly built and designed and sound, as we journalists are apt to describe it, yucky. This is one of the best low cost amplifiers on the market. And would you believe 949 is low cost for a good quality valve amp? It's a sort of modern version of the classic 50s amp, the Leak Stereo 20. Low in power it might be, but it does offer beautiful detail and clarity. Okay, I did promise a trio of higher end amplifiers. And what I'm gonna do for the first, well, two amplifiers is give you an either or in terms of purchase decisions. Now, both of the amplifiers I'm gonna mention are priced around three and a half thousand pounds quite a healthy sum i'm sure you'll agree but i would say both of these amplifiers follow a slightly different path in terms of sonic signatures so to give you a choice i thought i would pick two integrateds around that sort of same price point the first one is from name it's the supernate 3 and it's priced around three and a half thousand pounds. Offering a well-built chassis with lots of interior isolation to keep the harmful electrical noise down, the latest version of this venerable amplifier increases the size of the transformer, which can be found giving this beast a meaty bass output with mid-range authority. This is an amplifier in charge. Now, if you want something a little bit contrasting, to the name, something that goes in a different direction, sonically speaking, I would look at a Parasound amplifier. This particular one has been around for a little while now. It's priced around 3,300 or so, and it's called the Halo. One of those amplifiers that sounds good, but also packs in features galore. There's a phono amplifier here, a headphone amplifier, a DAC, outputting high-res sound, including DSD, plus balance connections, and even a few AV facilities, and plenty of inputs for your hi-fi gear. And I would also say that the sound is slightly a little bit more mid-range, treble-centric. There's good bass, obviously, from the Halo, but I would say it's a little bit more balanced and rather more neutral than the name. And for my final choice, well, let's go a bit silly, shall we? And we'll look at one from Avid, and this is all of 13,000 pounds, and it's called the Sigsum. Replete with bespoke circuit design and oozing with high quality components, this Class AB 110 watts into eight ohms beast does have a quality look. It's big, it's bold, and it weighs a ton, but it also provides an effortless and detailed output via single-ended mode, as well as the quite startling performance via balanced mode. Add the headphone and phono options, and you have an amazing product here. There is no doubt the Avid is an exceptional amplifier. And that's it, folks. That is my buyer's guide. Now, in terms of the stated prices, well, I'm sure you can find a better deal than the price points I've stated if you hunt around. If you do a bit of extra research in terms of hi-fi dealerships, eBay and the like, I'm sure you'll find a better price out there. But that's me done. Please don't forget to give me your top three integrated amplifiers below in the comments section. And please join me next week for the next video. Until then, bye bye for now.